Hey guys, it's Chris, and they finally dropped a Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer, an actual trailer as opposed to all these little damn teasers. So let's jump in and break down this trailer, but first let me thank my newest Patreons. Really appreciate you guys. You keep this channel going. Thank you to Kelly Gant. Thank you to Khaleesi Lisa Mandy, as well as Ungaliant. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you joining the Patreon family. So anyway, let's jump right in and break down this first trailer from Game of Thrones Season 8. Okay, so let's jump right in, and first we have Arya, and she is scared shitless. As she does a voiceover, being a little bit cocky, saying she's seen death and it has many faces, and she looks forward to seeing this one. So it's showing her expectation versus the reality of what she's about to see. Most of this trailer happens during the Battle of Winterfell, it looks like, during Episode 3. Now, who knows exactly what's happened here? She's obviously scared. She looks like she's running from either White Walkers or a lot of Whites, so perhaps she just saw someone killed. Perhaps she just got overran by whites and she's trying to get the hell up out of there. So this is definitely going to be different from her usual assignments, so to speak, or people on her list where she wears a face and sneaks up and just stabs somebody or cuts their throat. This is a whole different ball game. And during this little montage of Arya running as well, we see Davos here on the battlements of Winterfell getting ready. This is really building up the tension here. And of course, at this point, they know they're coming. Obviously, Bran has likely seen this, so they probably have already hit the last hearth. And again, this should be the beginning of episode three. And remember what Davos said from a previous season, before a battle, what he always does, he walks away from camp and goes and shits his guts out. And as Arya continues her montage here, we see Varys and other people hiding in the crypts of Winterfell. I think I see Gilly back there in the background as well with baby Sam sitting right in front of the statue, but I'm not really sure. This trailer is very, very dark, and even when you lighten it, it's hard to see things. But Varys looks really worried here. He looks up like he just heard something horrible. Perhaps he just hears the sound of the battle. This definitely points to the idea we've been talking about in live streams that the crypts will be very important and they will probably escape through the crypts as well. We finish up with Arya's montage where she says, I look forward to seeing this one. She's talking about the face of death as in the Night King as she holds a piece of dragon glass. So again, this is going to be completely different for Arya from what she's used to. She's used to wearing a face and simply blending in and then just cutting somebody's throat, poisoning them, whatever it may be but this is a whole different ball game. So I really like this idea of them setting up Arya's expectations versus the reality. And in our next scene, we see Euron bringing over the Golden Company and we see a shot of Harry Strickland from behind here, but you can see they're all on the boat here, the Golden Company, and that will be Harry Strickland, of course, on the silence there. And he is going, of course, to King's Landing first to meet with Cersei. The question is, is where his loyalties will lie before they probably end up switching sides and fighting for the Targaryens. Will Harry Strickland and the Golden Company break their contract? I'm pretty sure they will. But before that, will he be loyal to Cersei or will he be loyal to Euron? Because they're both definitely going to try to play each other and get them on their side. And next we have a shot of Beric, Tormund, and Ed. So they are alive as we all suspected. We didn't think they would kill them off screen. And Beric, of course, here has his sword of flame. So they are in the middle of some kind of battle. The question is, is this Winterfell? Did they make it down to Winterfell in time before the battle? I would assume this would be because I don't think it makes any sense for them to have a battle at Castle Black or something like that. So I do expect that Tormund and Beric will make it to Castle Black get Dolores, Ed, and the few remaining Night's Watch members and head down to Winterfell. And hopefully, since the Army of the Dead seem to be taking their sweet time, they will make it to Winterfell before they do. So at least they made it to Season 8. We'll see if they make it through Season 8. And of course, Bran here also starts his monologue as well. And in our next scene, we do see him talking to Sam. And Sam looks worried as he looks back as if someone just left. So I'm thinking here they just had a conversation with Jon maybe gave him the big reveal of R plus L equals J, who he actually is, and he probably stormed off mad as hell. He's going to take some time to process this, but I think that's part of this idea too, is that he may not have a lot of time to process who he actually is and what that really means for his future, for the Seven Kingdoms, and for Danny as well. So in my opinion, they just had a really important conversation with John, and he just walked off, probably mad as hell, going to the crypt somewhere, or perhaps maybe out to the God's Wood where Ned used to sit and clean his sword. And as Bran continues his monologue, we do see King's Landing. Now it is sunny again here. It's really interesting how it's not winter, but again, just because winter has come this far south, as we saw last year, doesn't mean it's going to snow every single day until the Night King gets there. And then of course, it's going to be a dark, stormy type of thing. And then we see a shot of Cersei smiling here, still in her armor, 
with Kyburn, and this is likely when the Golden Company arrives. So Euron has probably shown up here. They're probably looking over the balcony at Blackwater Bay here, where the Golden Company has arrived, and she can start kicking in her plans. And this next shot I really love because it parallels Season 1, Episode 1, Winter is Coming. We have this little boy on a rooftop in Wintertown as the Unsullied and Targaryens march through to Winterfell that you can see in the background. This is a direct parallel to Bran in Season 1 when he was on the roof and saw Robert's procession coming through. So this is a very cool shot here. We've never seen Wintertown in this sense before. We've seen Bran looking out a window toward Winterfell, but we've never seen how close they are together as far as the show goes. And this is a really cool shot to parallel and mirror Season 1, Episode 1. Now, we also might see a raven on top of Winterfell to represent Bran himself as he sees them coming as well. But if not, this works just as well. So this is not Bran in Winterfell. This is some kid here in Wintertown. This season, especially Episode 1, will definitely rhyme with Season 1. And as Bran finishes up his monologue about coming home, we see John and Danny on horseback here as they march through Wintertown to Winterfell. Just a continuation of the shot we just saw with the little boy there on the roof. And as far as who his Bran is talking to, it's hard to say. It could be John, as far as all the things he's been through leads him home. But this could also be Arya as well, because Arya went through all this stuff and literally left across the narrow sea to Braavos to become a faceless man to come home in the end and kind of abandon her killing list. So it's really hard to say. It also could be Sansa. She went through a lot of stuff and left and came back home. But the way it started earlier, it might be John with the whole RLJ conversation and what that means for the end game of the series as far as why his Targaryen slash Stark blood, the Song of Ice and Fire, is so important. And of course, in our next scene, it's probably part of the same sequence here. We see Sansa on the battlements of Winterfell seeing the dragons for the first time fly across, and she looks pretty damn amazed. Because remember, even though they've heard about Danny and the dragons coming back to Westeros, when people see them, it's a totally different experience because these things were simply tales to people. They have not existed in this world for over 150 years, and to see these living creatures fly over your home has got to be truly astonishing. But I like this shot here. I do think Arya and Sansa will come to like Danny for who she is and really respect her, for being the warrior queen she is and that she's actually coming to save the North as opposed to just ruling it. And we see the dragons flying over Winterfell here as John begins his little monologue and his little speech where he's telling his troops and us, the audience, about this end game and about this final battle here or this big battle in Winterfell, letting them and us know how important this is and how much is at stake as we see Danny approaching John in the crypts of Winterfell. Now, I don't know exactly what statue he's standing in front of, but I think this is actually Lyanna here. You can kind of see an outline there of what looks like Lyanna's statue. And if it is Lyanna, of course, this would mean this is after the conversation that Bran and Sam have with Jon, as we saw earlier. And he is now going down there to talk to Ned and think about all this stuff about what's going on with his life, who he really is, and what all this means. It looks like Danny is coming up to actually comfort him. So to me, this looks like John has found out, and it's also possible Danny does not know at this point. She just knows something's wrong with John, so she's coming to comfort him and ask what's wrong and what's bothering him. But I do believe this is him standing in front of his mother now, after he knows the truth. And as John continues his speech, we see them getting ready for war, specifically a blacksmith making weapons. We see Gendry here. He seems to be working on weapons as well. I don't think he's making Valyrian steel or anything like that. I think he's likely just helping make more swords, more dragonglass weapons, etc. That's likely going to be his major role here, at least in Winterfell. So it's just kind of getting them and us, the audience, ready for battle. And as he continues talking to everyone about how they don't get tired and they don't stop, etc., we see Jorah and company getting ready for battle. This is the point where they know they're here. This is going to be at night. This is going to be very dark and very bloody. And we see all the troops getting ready here. And John has spoken to everyone at this point and told everyone to get in their positions. And thank you everyone who sent me messages before I even saw the trailer. But it does look like Jorah has Heartsbane here. If you zoom in on the side of this horse, this does look to be the pommel of Heartsbane. Of course, this is the ancestral sword of House Tarly, which Sam stole last year. So we did expect it to go to someone. So it looks like at least at this point, Jorah has it. Although he may not use it in a battle, it is a great sword. So someone like the Hound would certainly be able to use this. And I think he deserves a Valyrian steel sword. So it looks to be at least Heartsbane will go to good use. And at least at this point, 
Jorah seems to have it on his horse. And the next shot here is Grey Worm and Masande. Grey Worm gives Masande one last kiss. Hopefully it's not the last kiss, but I got a bad feeling about this as John continues his speech and everyone gets ready for battle. This is not going to be pretty. So in the next scene, we see who I believe is Brienne on the battlements of Winterfell here. This also could be Jorah, but I believe by the armor and the way her hair moves, I believe this is Brienne. As we see in the background, the glow of fire. So at this point, Winterfell is probably burning. We see ash in the air as well as smoke and all that stuff. So I think this is just to show a little bit of the battle, a little tiny bit, because this battle is going to be basically the entire episode of episode three. But what I really like about this little montage here is it's really showing the human emotion of everyone. It's showing Grey Worm and Masande's love. It's showing John and Danny's love. So it's really contrasting here what they're up against. It's all about people and what they feel, who they love, etc versus the Night King who has no feeling. So what we're hearing here in John's speech as well as what we're seeing in this little montage of them getting ready is literally about their humanity and of course the lack of humanity in what they're about to face. We see a continuation of a little battle scene here. We see Jamie as Winterfell burns in the background. I can't really tell who that is behind him. For a minute it looked like Theon. I'm not sure if he'd be back in Winterfell at this point, but he seems to be yelling for Bronn here. Now of course the question is, is he yelling for Bronn as in get over here or is he yelling for Bronn because he just died? I'm really worried about this here because I want Bronn to live, of course, like I do many people. But of course, that's going to be wishful thinking. This is not going to end well. And I want Bronn to get his damn castle or two. And our next shot is to contrast what's going on in Winterfell because it's on fire in the middle of a battle for life itself. And down here in King's Landing, there's just a couple people here in the Red Keep. And this is definitely Harry Strickland and Euron talking to Cersei. So this is likely shortly after they arrived here and they're going over their plans, whatever that may be. And there, of course, there is some speculation that she may actually send Harry Strickland up to Winterfell to attack them while they're fighting the Army of the Dead, or at least before that happens. We'll see what her actual plans are here. But this is definitely Harry Strickland here talking to Cersei for the first time. And what I really like is John finishes his montage about feeling this enemy does not feel, it ends here with Cersei in this next shot where she is basically not in her armor. She's in kind of a regular nightgown type of dress here. She has tears in her eyes. And of course, she's drinking wine. This means that at this point, Cersei has lost this child and she has now lost everything she holds dear. So now at this point, she will be completely insane and not make any rational decisions at all. So that may mean that she abandons her plan to stay there and let the North fight it out with the Army of the Dead and sends the Golden Company up north to try to kill them while they're fighting the dead. So this is really kind of sad for Cersei in a way, even though she's been a villain from day one. She's now completely lost everything. She's definitely drinking wine here and she's not in her armor. So that means she has lost this child as we all suspected. And of course, as John just told us in his monologue, she no longer feels things. So she is essentially just as bad as the Night King without all the magical ice powers. And next we have this awesome shot of the dragons flying over snow. This is a definite contrast from what we just saw previously in this trailer, where there's a little bit of hope here. Now again, this is before the battle more than likely. I don't think this is after everything's done or whatever, but it shows you a glimmer of hope here because these are really gorgeous shots here of the dragons flying over the north somewhere. But I looked here very closely and I do not see anyone on the back of these dragons. So likely, this is just flying around the north somewhere when they arrive at Winterfell or something like that. And then we flash to the shot we just saw in a previous little teaser where Arya and people see the dragons for the first time in Wintertown, like we mentioned. So this is definitely going to be the first time she sees the dragons, just like we saw Sansa earlier. Arya is looking up with that little smile because she's definitely interested in seeing these dragons, which makes me think her and Danny will get along great, at least fairly quickly. And then we hear Jamie start to speak as we start this little next montage where people are getting ready for battle. We see Grey Worm putting his helmet on. We see John in front of a weirwood tree. Again, I think this is after he finds out who he is. Otherwise, he wouldn't go out there unless he's just going to pray or something before the battle. Almost walk in Ned's footsteps because Ned always came out here after he did something like kill somebody that deserted the Night's Watch to clean his sword. This is where he came to think. And I think John's doing the same thing here. 
Next, we see a really cool shot of the helm beside some fire here. And this is very, very important, I think, because Winterfell is on fire. And the hound here, I don't know if that's fresh burns on his face or it's just the way it's glimmering in the firelight there. But this is a big thing because the hound, at some point, is not going to back down from fire. He's going to use fire, as a matter of fact, maybe to kill his brother. I believe the hound may actually light his sword on fire because we've seen too many times in previous seasons where he's back down when he sees fire. We saw it at Blackwater Bay. We saw it last season beyond the wall and he kind of froze for a second. At some point, he's going to not freeze and actually embrace the fire. And I believe that's why we saw him read things in the flames last year. And we see Jamie finish up his little monologue here where he's talking likely to John and Danny. This is likely when he just arrived at Winterfell. He doesn't have Northern armor on here yet, so this is likely when he first gets here, and he's been questioned about why he's there, the things he's done, etc. So there will be that drama about who he used to be, being a Lannister, and the things he's done, and we'll likely hear something from Bran about the things I do for love, and John and Danny, regardless of what he's done in the past, of course, will let him live, and of course, Brienne will actually back him up as well about how he's changed and the real reason that he killed the Mad King. So this will be a little redemption story for Jamie as well, where he says, look, I did what I did for this reason, but I'm different now, and I've made a pledge here, just like he says in the little speech, and I'm here to honor that pledge, and I will die doing so. In our next scene here, we see someone grabbing a staff here, I believe. This is not a sword, I don't believe. I believe that little piece there is part of Arya's sleeve. So I think this is going to be Arya grabbing a staff because, of course, in the next couple shots, we do see Arya swinging some kind of staff and killing whites, I believe. This is Arya as this battle starts, grabbing the staff as she's about to be attacked or defend herself against whites, likely climbing the walls. In our next shot, we see John and several people running away. Perhaps they're trying to escape into the crypts of Winterfell. I can't really tell where they're running other than inside Winterfell to this gate, whatever it may be. This is not the regular entrance to the crypts here, or this could be after things start to go downhill and he makes the call to get the hell out of there. And I do think the crypts will be important for that. They will have to retreat at some point here, I believe, and get the hell out of Winterfell because Winterfell will burn. We see a shot here of a bunch of horses. Now, this is likely going to be the Dothraki here. Some people have expressed to me before I recorded this that they thought they saw a pack of wolves running by. I don't see that clearly, so I'm not 100% sure, but it damn sure would be really cool to see the wolf pack show up, as in Nymeria and the wolf pack, and Bran can warg the whole damn pack. Next shot is really, really cool. We see Jon and Danny approaching Drogon and Rhaegal after they've been feasting somewhere. And this reminds me of last year with Danny walking up to her dragons as she left to go save them beyond the wall. It's a very similar shot here. So I think Jon's going to ride a fucking dragon. I think this has to be after he finds out, and this is what he's going to do here, I think. So it looks like they're expecting for Jon and Danny to climb on them. So this may be the first time we see Jon Snow ride a dragon after accepting who he is, and maybe this is just to prove to himself that he actually is who Bran says he is. So Jon will, of course, be the third dragon rider since the big surprise was the Night King being the second. And next, we have a quick shot of some of the ladies of our story. We have Sansa looking concerned. We have Arya with that staff I just talked about. She looks like she is fighting whites here. We see a shot of Danny closing her eyes as if she just heard bad news. Maybe she just heard the truth about John, and it makes her worry about what she is and what her purpose is. And of course, the next shot, we see what we see in a lot of trailers, Tyrion looking up at something, likely going to be a dragon here, but this could be a little bit of tricky editing because the very next shot we do see it looks to be Drogon or Rhaegal actually firing flame, but that's not going to be at Tyrion because it's just a little tricky editing there. You can see in the shot with Tyrion, he is in the daylight looking up at something, and the shot of the dragon is at night. So it's not going to be Tyrion getting burned, at least not at this point. And the next few shots here, we see everyone getting ready for the battle. Right before it happens, we see people standing there waiting. We see Brienne and Pod specifically. So this is really, really building up the tension here as we see everybody waiting. So of course, at this point, Brienne knows they're coming and they're almost here. And then, of course, after we see the last shot of Jorah looking on with Brienne and Pod and everyone else outside the walls of Winterfell, we see a White Walker's horse step towards Winterfell right before this battle. So this is going to be probably the end of Episode 2, maybe, or the very beginning of Episode 3, because, again, I believe the entirety of Episode 3 will be the full battle at Winterfell. Jon gave his speech, and now they are here. 
So anyway, guys, that's it. That's our first Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer. We'll probably get one or two more before the season starts in about five weeks or so. So we are very, very close. The Long Night is almost over, and this gives us a lot to look forward to here. But I really love how they're setting up the tension here. And as I mentioned, I think they purposely made this trailer fairly dark because it's going to be literally a dark thing this season. But then again, you have those couple beautiful shots of dragons flying over in the snow during the sunlight and all that good stuff almost symbolizing a little bit of hope. So anyway, I think that's the feeling they're setting up here because I believe in season eight, they will simply jump straight into the action as opposed to having some episode where they kind of rehash last year because they simply don't have the time to do it. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon Smokescreen producers. And thank you to everyone on YouTube as well. And as usual, if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And also be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.